Hi everybody. What I'm going to cover in this video is how to use the Moat app specifically for full uh, eta squared, full omega squared, and epsilon from sum of squares, not from f. And so one of our previous tabs really covered how to calculate these directly from f. And that's a little easier. But let's say you want to calculate them from sum of squares directly. Well, we're going to cover how to do that. We're going to save the partial statistics for a different video. So this is just going to cover full eta, omega, and epsilon. Start with full eta squared. This one's probably the easiest out of the bunch. And I'm only really going to recommend this for one-way designs. Because once you get into multi-way designs, partial eta or omega are much better because that's the ones people tend to report. You can calculate full uh, on any of those, and we'll kind of cover that a little bit. Um, but in general, one-way designs, people tend to do the full one, and uh, multi-way designs, people tend to do partials, because a partial is the same as full with a one-way design. So let's look at how we do this. So under the code, what you can see is happening for eta is that it's sum of squares model divided by sum of squares total, and we pull the f statistics from you so that we can calculate this correctly because it's based on the non-central f distribution. So these are numbers we need to calculate the confidence interval. If we look at omega, this gets a little bit trickier. Um, and it's, uh, oops, that's the wrong tab. I was like, that's the wrong formula. Um, <clears throat> It's a little bit more involved than just sum of squares um, model over total. So now we've got degrees of freedom model, mean square model, mean squared error, and sum of squares total. So we'll look at how do we get all of those. Epsilon is very similar to omega. It just adds, it just takes out that mean squared off the bottom. So we should see that eta is the largest followed by epsilon and then um, omega. All right, so let's start with eta and work our way down. I'm going to show you some output from three programs uh, for one-way designs. Since two-way designs get incredibly tricky to calculate sum of squares total, I'm just gonna recommend that you use this for one-way designs, and then for multi-way designs, you really focus on partials, All right? So what I wanna do for eta squared, uh, and this is a between subjects design, is look for uh, sum of squares model and sum of squares total. So sum of squares here is just under sum of squares here in JAS, which is really handy. The model is the one based on your group or your independent variable. So we're gonna enter 25.24 over here. We're also gonna pull our degrees of freedom, which are two and eight, and our F value, 5.13. So we're gonna do two, eight, sum of squares model, which I said was 25.24. Hold on to that one and 5.13. We'll use alpha as 0.05. Now, where do I get sum of squares total? Because unfortunately, there's no total on here anywhere. Well, thankfully for between subjects ANOVA, you just add these two together. So you take 25.24 plus 19.67. If you guys have seen me do math on my channel before, you know I'm pretty terrible, so I wrote it down. It's 44.91. Coming back over here, we would type 44.91 calculate and we should get 0.56 so if you watch the full video from f you'll see that this is the exact same number so this is why f calculating them directly from f is sometimes a little easier however we get the same basically the same answer here and so that sum of squares total wasn't too bad let's look at how to do that from other programs so here's sas sas for all of the crap that it gets, has model and error listed here, and actually has the sum of squares total right here. So it actually will give you the total, and you can just uh, type it in directly, so 44.91. So I would type in 25.24, the one I'm interested in, 44.91, my two and eight, and my 5.13. And we should get back um, the same thing as R squared here. So for SAS, that's nice because it does actually have the total on it. Now, in SPSS, depending on which way you run this, you might also see the total. So this is labeled as between groups and within groups, um, but really what this is is sum of squares model here, sum of squares total here, two and eight, and F. So really the only one that doesn't give you total outright for between subjects and NOVAs is JASP. So you have to add them together. That's not so bad. 
Now let's pop over to repeated measures ANOVA because this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. So repeated measures ANOVA with JASP, what we're going to have to do is figure out the sum of squares total because it's not listed on here or really, um, or SPSS, I believe. And so sum of squares total from JASP uh, is going to be calculated by adding up the sum of squares uh, repeated measures or the sum of squares model here for our repeated measures factor one. So this 37,000 plus this 25,000 from the error plus this residual over here from this between subjects effects box. So the between subjects effects box is where at least JASP and SPSS put the sum of squares for subject variance in repeated measures which if you've watched my channel for a while, sometimes describe as the peopleness variance, but this is the, um, the other component to a repeated measures design is dealing with the fact that each person's tested multiple times. So after we found our peopleness variance, what we would do is add them all up. So 37,000 plus 2,500 plus 23,000, which is around 63,000. But first let me give you a word of warning. This partial, this eta squared over here is a lie. This is partial eta squared because if we go back here and look at the formulas, the formula for full eta squared is sum of squares model over sum of squares total. In a repeated measures design, that is model plus error plus subject variance. However, most programs treat it as if it's partial eta, which is sum of squares model over sum of squares model plus error. In a between subjects design, model plus error is total. In a repeated measures design, that is not the same. And so it's kind of a misleading thing about repeated measures designs is that the full eta squared is not correct. <laughs> so you will get a different number here than you will see over here. And we'll talk about uh, a remedy of that in just a second. So if I want to calculate this correctly, what I want to do is come over here and enter. So let's say 2 and 34. Our sum of squares model, we figured out was like 37,000. So 37,572. Okay. My sum of squares total, if I add them all up, is 63,463. Our F value was at 253.3. Our alpha will keep at 0.05. Okay. Now when I look at a summary of this, it says that eta squared is 15.59. And it's actually going to give me the incorrect confidence interval. And that's because this is based on F. So it's actually calculating eta squared as if it is partial. So your confidence interval here will not match. Now that is the actual F or eta squared statistic, but because that subject variance gets thrown out or excluded, um, that in F, it, pro it might also need to be excluded in eta. So it kind of depends. Um, you won't be able to get a proper confidence interval because the confidence interval is based on F, um, which doesn't include subject variance. So if we didn't want to include subject variance here and we wanted it all to kind of even out, what we could do is just calculate 37,572 plus 2522. And at this point, you might as well use the partial page. But if I did that, um, I did not pre-add these together. So 37572 plus 2522 is more like 40,094. Okay. And let's go back over here. Change our sum of squares total out. So 40,094. And now you're gonna see numbers that match. So this, there's a disconnect here between the formula right, and F because the formula uses sum of squares total, um, but our F are the way that we calculate the confidence interval is actually based on F. And since F excludes subject variance, potentially we should exclude subject variance over here as well. Um, but one thing to note is that you shouldn't report a confidence interval where the FX size is not in it. And so that's why you're going to see this discrepancy. And that's one thing our lab is working on is thinking about maybe how to fix that discrepancy since uh, eta squared is known to be biased, especially for repeated measures designs. Okay. That's completely off subject, field, but that's how you get the numbers. Okay. Let's look at omega now. 
and also use um, a similar set of outputs. So let's switch outputs and look at SAS here. And so I could have showed you uh, before, that's here's where I got the total number. So SAS actually gives you the total. It's one of the only <laughs> programs that actually shows you the complete sum of squares total. Now it shows me my model here, but I really am more interested in down here for feelings. So, so sum of squares um, for sum of squares model is actually this one down here. Don't use the one up here um, because that'll give you subject and um, and IV at the same time. And so we want to use this 37,000 one here. We've got our degrees of freedom as two and 34. Remember we talked about this in one of the other videos about how this model component here is the combination of these two things. And we're really more interested in just the IV and not where it says subject. Okay. And so we could enter those directly from here, but Omega does something slightly different. So let's enter what we know. We know it's two and 34. And now it's asking me for mean square model. Well, mean square model is going to be on this output, it's going to be here under mean square, and then here for our IV. So we've got 18,786. If I round up 18,786, my mean squared error is going to be here, where it says error under mean square, so 74.17. And my sum of squares total, and this is the tricky part. So do we use the full sum of squares or do we not? But let's go ahead and enter sum of squares total at 63,000 and see what answer we get. So it's 63, 463, if I round up. You calculate, we get omega squared is 0.59. You'll see that that confidence interval doesn't quite match. And then if I look at my output, so we don't get omega squared in this one, but we do see omega squared in our JASP output. Mm, doesn't quite match. And so what we can what we can say is that they're probably using um, sum of squares, um, sum of squares model plus sum of squares uh, error to mean the total instead instead of the full sum of squares total, which we figured out was 40094. And then now you'll see an omega squared much more in line. So for sum of squares total on a repeated measure design, you shouldn't drop the subject variance, but to make these work with the confidence intervals correct, we will drop the subject variance. Now you see the same thing on epsilon. Epsilon just um, changes the denominator here. <clears throat> and so let's take one more look this time at SPSS. Okay. So I've got sum of squares um, model, sum of squares error, mean square model is 8701, mean squared error 74. Okay. If I wanted to get that 63,000, I would add this number down here to it, but that's obviously not what they're doing over here. And so you could get to the 63,000 as well, but we've kind of already covered how this doesn't totally work. So let's try that. So two and 34, our mean square model was this 87,786, 18,786. Our mean squared error was around 74 and our sum of squares total with the only the error and the model in it is 40,094. And then we hit calculate and we should get around the same numbers. Now all of these are precisely the same in two decimal places um, because it's so big. If we were to use one that was a little smaller, uh, you would see the differences between omega, epsilon, and eta um, where they tend to fall where omega is the smallest then epsilon and then eta is the largest. Um, but what really what I wanted to cover was for repeated measures design, sum of squares total should, in theory, include model plus error plus subject variance. 
in practicality, because of the way that the confidence intervals are calculated from F, where subject variance is excluded, you should also exclude var um, subject variance and treat sum of squares total as model plus error. And that way your confidence interval will include the actual effect size. Now, if you wanted to calculate it as um, completely over total, I would just not report the conf uh, confidence interval. And so that's how you calculate full um, eta, omega, and epsilon from one way between subjects and repeated measures designs with some commentary on how repeated measures designs is a little different. And then what, uh, what you'll want to look at next is how to do the partial statistics based on all of these designs.